Thanks, Janice. A little known extreme sport is gathering speed around the country. It's called kiteboarding, and it involves a big kite and a surfboard. And we asked NBC's Carrie Sanders to show us how it's done. The sweet moments of summer a gentle breeze, warm sun, a child flying a kite. But hold on. Kite flying's gone extreme. Kiteboarding. Kiteboarder magazine editor Ryan Riccatelli says this is the fastest growing participation sport in the country. I mean, right there, what you just saw, if someone sees that, I guarantee if you have a crowd of 10 people, at least three are going to want to try and do it. And, you know, of those three people, two of them are going to be hooked. Invented by experimental snowboarders about five years ago, there are now close to 50,000 kiteboarders in the world. This guy's some fun. It's a sport with few limits. Neil Hutchinson holds the distance record, 90 miles from Key West to Cuba. It's actually a lot like whiteboarding, but I'm driving the boat now as well as riding the board. Also, the pool isn't just lateral. I can angle this kite up and it will actually lift me off the water. It merges a number of board sports with a little sailing thrown in. Kiteboarders strap their feet in, hook a parachute-sized kite to a harness, and... a radical sport that's going mainstream. Even presidential candidate Senator John Kerry is hooked. That's him off the coast of Cape Cod earlier this year. The kite's the hardest part. The board's not too bad. Hey, if a 60-year-old politician can do it, the least a 43-year-old out of shape reporter can do is give it a shot. Hook him up to the kite and let him uh, try and figure it out. A deep breath, a guess as to what the wind might do, and... The sport is exciting, with an edge of danger. An unexpected gust, and without the proper technique, this kiteboarder found himself flying through the beach parking lot. This sport is probably one of the most humbling sports. After about an hour, I get it. Let's see that again, in slow motion. Ah, yes, I'm kiteboarding. Well, kind of. It was a nice try. For today, Kerry Sanders, NBC News, Miami. And a big thanks to our own Carrie Sanders. We have with us, though, Jason Slezak, who is a professional kiteboarder. He's at Cedar Beach on Long Island, New York, this morning. Hi there, Jason. Hi there. Good morning. Well, I, I should tell people we wanted to have some kiteboarders behind you, but I know there's no wind this morning. So tell us yeah. generally, we got some pictures we can show people, but tell us, is this something that anybody can do? I mean, we just saw Carrie giving it a shot, or is this really just for thrill seekers? No, definitely. It's a very easy to learn and accessible sport uh, with proper instruction. Walk us through kind of what the technique is. I mean, it, it's obviously a combination between surfing and, I don't know, windsurfing, something else. Um, I, I, what kind of skills do you have to have to be able to give it a try? Do you have to know how to surf? No, just uh, some basic balance skills, you know, learning how to fly the kites and learning how to ride the board are, you know, the two main parts of the sport. And uh, it just takes a little bit of time and a little bit of practice. It looks like it would also take a lot of upper body strength because you have to pull yourself up, right? A um, little bit of upper body strength, not nearly as much as you would expect. You have a harness, uh, which I'm wearing here, that you can hook into and unhook from. So uh, the, the pull isn't on your arms all the time. So how fast do you get going and how high off the water can you get? Um, the speed record was just set at a little over 39 knots. Um, over in Europe, they had a speed contest. Um, typically, it's maybe around 25, you know, 15 to 25 miles an hour. And, uh, you know, jumps range anywhere from, you know, 10 to on the bigger jumps, maybe 40 to even 50 feet. What, what kind of equipment do you need? I guess you're buying special you know, a special kite board now. Um, this isn't just sort of a modified surfboard anymore. Is it expensive to try this? Um, the, the equipment in the past few years has gotten really reasonable, uh, very affordable and very accessible and much easier to use. Um, you know, there are kite specific boards and um, you can get into gear packages for right around $4.99, upwards of, you know, $17.99, depending on your price range. I, I know it can be dangerous if you don't know what you're doing. We saw in Carrie Sanders' piece the guy who flew into the parking lot. Have you had any really close calls like that? 
Um, nothing really major. You know, it's all in uh, just learning to use the equipment properly, taking proper instruction uh, from a qualified instructor, and um, you know, just using some common sense. As with most sports, there is also a competitive element to it. Tell us about that. Um, yeah, the competitive side of kiteboarding, you know, as the sport's been growing, has been changing a little bit. Um, but the basic format is four guys on the water at a time um, being judged on their overall performance. And um, there is, you know, a worldwide circuit and uh, a lot of contests nationwide. Well, Jason, I got to tell you, it really does look like fun. So we appreciate you telling us about it. Thanks for joining us this morning. It's extremely addictive and very fun. <laughs> addictive. All right, well, thanks again for being here. And still to come this morning, don't lose heart. Anne and Nancy Wilson and company are going to.